Is Vanestra Rowe the former master to Chimere? This is where the fun begins. Yeah! <laughs> the Acolyte Episode 6 just revealed a whole lot of information about Chimere's character. Not only was he a former Jedi, but he also has this crazy scar on his back, and he just might be over a hundred years old. What did he say? As Chimere said, he was once a Jedi. It was a really long time ago. But what does that mean a really long time ago? 10, 15 years, or 50, or 100 years? Okay, okay, I get it. This sounds crazy. It doesn't look like Chimere's 100 years old, but hear me out. Because episode 6 of the Accolade just revealed three major details that point directly to Vanestra Rowe being the former master of Chimere and the reason that Chimere is this Sith Lord that stands before us. And this scar on his back might be the key to explaining everything. But before we get to those three major details, let's talk about who the f*** is Vernestra Rowe. Vernestra was originally introduced in the High Republic novels. She was born in the year 248 BBY, which is about 100 years before the Acolyte show. She became a Jedi Knight at the age of 15 making her one of the youngest to ever do that. Her master was Delon Geos, and she's been a Jedi for as long as she can remember. So although she might just look like the random green lady in the Acolyte show, she's been around the Jedi Order for quite some time. And a big fan favorite thing when it comes to Vernestra Rowe is her light whip. A lightsaber like we saw in episode 6 that turns into a whip. But that's not all. Vernestra is very strong when it comes to the Force. As you can see in episode 6, she has the ability of Force Echo, just like Ahsoka or Cal Kestis. She's not only seeing the battlefield in front of her on Kofar, but she's reliving it through the Force. And she seems to be the only character in this entire Acolyte show that senses a shift in the Force. The return of the Sith. Now that brings us to Chimere, because she might be the only one who senses it because it was once her former Padawan. Now the first major detail that points to Vanestra Rowe being Chimere's master is the fact that he was once a Jedi. And not only that, but he was once a Jedi a really long time ago. This conversation between Osha and Chimere might be the most important of the entire episode. Now a lot is up in the air and can be debated about what a really long time means, but if Osha never saw him or recognized him than he was before Osha's time. And Osha hasn't been a Jedi for at least six years, and she was with the Jedi Order for 10 years. Meaning Chimir left the Jedi Order at least 16 years ago. But it must have been longer because Master Soul doesn't know who he is either. When Soul says, I sense something familiar. In the forest, he's not talking about knowing Chimir from when they were kids. He's talking about episode 2, when the two of them already met. They don't have some previous knowledge of each other, as clearly in episode 6 when Sol is talking to Mei, he has no idea who Chimere really is. So the first piece of evidence to support that Vanestra Rowe is the former master to Chimere is plain and simple. He was a Jedi. It was a really long time ago. And there's only a handful of Jedi that have been around for that long. And Vanestra just happens to be one of them. And that brings us to the second major detail that makes me believe Vanestra Rowe is definitely the former master of Chimere. And that is the water that he's bathing in. Because you might be asking yourself, Mike, how the hell could Vanestra be the former master to Chimere if Chimere only looks like he's 30 years old? Well, you're right. The actor who plays Chimere is Manny Jacinto. And first of all, he's doing an incredible job. But second of all, he's only 38 in real life. And if he was the former Padawan to Vernestra, he should be at least 50 years old by now. But that's where this mysterious unknown planet and its weird pools of water come into play. Chimere didn't just get naked for no reason in this sixth episode. Yes, he was trying to literally seduce Osha to the dark side, but I actually think this water is more important than anybody knows. We've seen magical water in in Star Wars before. Look at Bacta tanks. Bacta has the ability to turn Boba Fett's skin that has been completely covered in acid back to his normal look. And it's what keeps Anakin Skywalker, or Darth Vader, alive throughout the entire original trilogy. But I actually don't think that this is Bacta at all. There have been some other sort of powerful waters, and that comes in the ways of legends. As Abeloth, or the Mother, is created by drinking out of the fountain of power and bathing in the pool of knowledge. Now in this video, I won't dive into what all that means, but all you really need to know right now is that those bodies of water were extremely powerful. The water itself 
was powerful. So it's clearly not out of the realm of possibility that Chimir looks a lot younger than he actually is because of the water that he's bathing in. And there's even more evidence to suggest this. Inside of his cave or his house on this unknown planet, we see some type of pool indoors with tubes running in and out of it. I definitely think that Chimir, in some sort of way, is using the water of this mysterious planet to keep himself looking a lot younger than he actually is. But that brings us to the third and final major detail from this sixth episode, and that is the scar on his back. When Osha is asking about how Chimir got this scar, we are led to believe that his former master gave it to him. And when it comes to cinema or television, usually when somebody has scars on their back, it's because of a whip. And whips in Star Wars haven't really ever been seen. Oh wait, yeah, that's right, Vanestra Rowe just pulled out her laser whip in episode 6. Coincidence? I think not! But if all of this is true, and Vanestra really is the former master to Chimere, she's the one who gave him the scar, the water on this planet is making him younger, and he truly was a former Jedi, then this makes the final two episodes of this series far more interesting. Now you have two former Jedi, Osha and Chimere, fighting against their own former masters. Osha's master being Sol, and Chimere's master being Vanestra. And this would lead to quite the finale. Because let's be honest, with only two episodes left, we have no idea what this finale is going to look like. We can assume that episode 7 is going to be about the flashbacks to Brendock and seeing what truly happened to the witches all those years ago, but that still leaves the finale. Where does this show end? And this might be the answer to all of it. A final showdown between masters and former apprentices. Now this brings up a crazy theory of mine. As the falling out between Chimere and Vanestra was probably not a good one if it ended with Chimere having this massive scar on his back. But I think they had some sort of falling out that looked very similar to Anakin and Obi-Wan, and in a very similar way as to Obi-Wan leaving Anakin to die on the fiery pits of Mustafar, I think Vanestra, who light-whipped Chimere in the back, left him to die. And however many years ago that was, Vanestra thought Chimere was dead this entire time. And not only that, if Vanestra truly did give Chimere this scar, that means she must have broken the Jedi way. Because the rules of the Jedi say that you can't attack somebody with their back turned towards you. Chimere clearly states this in episode 5. Attack me <laughs> while my back is turned? Not very Jedi of you. And that was definitely for a reason. Because possibly his former master, Vanestra Rowe, attacked him from behind, leaving him with this horrible scar. And now she's the only one who can sense this shift in the Force because it's her former Padawan. But she doesn't know that yet. And when she comes face to face with Chimere, well... You're not going to want to miss that. But tell me what you think in the comments section below. Do you think that Vernestra Rowe is the former master to Chimere? And do you think Chimere is a lot older than we're led to believe? With only two episodes left in this Acolyte show, there are so many questions that need to be answered. And there's a lot in that sixth episode that you might have missed. But that's okay because I already broke all of it down in this video right here.